What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Rivian, and we're going to be modeling the company's financials from now until 2025 to figure out, you know, how much cars they're going to be selling, how much revenue is that going to generate, how much could that potentially value the company at. Rivian is one of the hottest companies in the electric vehicle space other than Tesla. Made huge news last week when Amazon announced they would be ordering 100,000 electric delivery vans from the company. Um, Rivian is a company that got on my radar about a year ago. I went to their product unveiling in LA where they unveiled the R. R1T, which is a pickup truck, electric luxury pickup truck, looks really dope, uh, aimed at this electric adventure vehicle niche, sort of luxury off-roading vehicles that are electric that allow you to experience nature in cool ways. Um, It's sort of a different niche than Tesla, but once again, pure electric, green, all that good stuff. They also unveiled the R1S, which is an SUV on top of that same pickup platform. So on one hand, we have Rivian uh, launching these luxury sort of, you know, niche truck and SUV products. On the other hand, they're partnering with Amazon to build delivery vans. They also have took on a huge investment of $500 million from Ford to, de- uh, to develop electric vehicles for them as well. So a ton of different ovens in the fire for Rivian. Um, I think this is a really, really fascinating company. I've been to Detroit, uh, visited one of their headquarters or design studios, was very, very impressed with what they're doing. Um, I had a chance to talk to the lead designer. Me and Sean Mitchell went and visited. Um, just, you know, I think this company is posing a real, uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of EV startups that I think are formidable and actually have a chance to go the distance. I think Rivian is one. They have RJ Scaringe, an amazing leader who's been able to raise billions of dollars of capital to get them well-funded. They've been developing this for 10 years. They're ready to bring it to market. With all this news swirling, I feel like I had enough data to sort of make a back of the napkin financial model for the company. So welcome to uh, Google Sheets world. This is my financial model that I made for Rivian. So Rivian has, I haven't been in contact with them about this at all. This is not official numbers. This is just my estimates. I'm going to put a link to this Google Sheet in the description so you guys can totally check it out, um, play with it, edit it, download it, put in your own estimates, tweak it, all that good stuff. Um, of course, I'm open sourcing it. So anyway, let's get right to it. So I tried to organize uh, the business into th- three different buckets. Essentially, Rivian, um, we have over here, you know, the main car business that they have. Um, Then we have Amazon because of the Amazon partnership. I think Amazon is going to be a big partner, the delivery van business, and then potentially semi-trucks, more on that in a second. And then we have the Ford and other business, which is, like I said, they're developing that uh, some technology for Ford to bring a vehicle to market. I think they're talking to a bunch of other auto companies on the back burner as well. There were some rumors about GM. So I decided to lump that all in with the Ford business. So let's just start with the Rivian business and see what I'm projecting there. Let's hop right into the details tab because this is where it gets fun. Starts out with units delivered of each product. Um, We have three products for Rivian, the R1T, which is that pickup truck um, that they say is going to start deliveries in 2020. And then we have the R1S, which is their SUV, which I think is going to start deliveries in 2021. But these are luxury high-end cars. And so these are going to sell not that many. I think Rivian's guided to sell about 80,000 of these cars, uh, total 70 to 80,000 of the R1S and R1T annually at maturity. So that's basically what I have them doing, hitting uh, sales of 40,000 units per year in 2021. Uh, for both the R1S and R1T and then sort of capping out and staying there. Um, and then with the average selling price, I have it starting at 100000 more premium, uh, higher end battery configurations to start, dropping down. Rivian's also going to start to unveil uh, cheaper battery configurations over time. So I think that's going to drop the ASP to where it averages out there at about $80,000. And so $80,000 times 40,000 units equals $3.2 billion in revenue from each of these programs. So in 2025, so we're looking at $6.4 billion in revenue in 2025. So pretty simple how I get to this calculation. Um, as you can see, Rivian's first revenue, $200 million in 2020, coming from those 2,000 deliveries of the $100,000 truck. What I really thought was interesting that I found researching this video is the rally car. So this is something that Rivian has said is their third car in development. They do, um, even RJ screened in some interview with Bloomberg, so they want to bring like six electric trucks and pickups to market. Um, and additionally, as part of their, their future roadmap is this rally car, which I think if you think about Rivian's mission as an electric adventure vehicle company, I think this fits in perfectly, like a car that gets muddy, that goes through the dirt, that's sort of like a compact version of what they're doing with their trucks. I think that has a much bigger addressable market than their trucks, frankly, and actually is kind of a product I'm really excited about to he- hear. And there is like a couple pictures online of like a leaked part of it. You can't really see anything at all, but it looks like they're already working on it. So anyway, totally speculative, but I have them starting deliveries of that rally car in 2022, uh, 10,000 units ramping up to a end maturity, about 100,000 units per year. I think it's going to be cheaper ASP around $50,000. Um, and there you have it. So this is, um, which actually, if you look at it as a standalone product, $5 billion in revenue in 2025, we'll actually be doing more revenue than the R1S or R1T standalone. But 
combining this all, um, the revenue, we have uh, Rivian basically scaling from 2,000 units in 2020, 20,000, 60,000, 120,000, 160,000 to 180,000 units sold in 2025, producing about 11.4 billion in revenue. Here is the blended gross margin of these vehicles. Just really simply, I just estimated gross margin. Um, I put 25% um, at an end state because it's sort of a luxury brand. That's about what Tesla's target is for their vehicles. So sort of a guess, but that's what I assumed. So there we have the Rivian side of the business, essentially a business that scales from zero, uh, maybe about 200 million in revenue next year to potentially about 10 billion in revenue in the next five years with the R1S, the R1T, and then one other car, which is that rally car. So a $10 billion business from just the Rivian brand alone. So I think that's some exciting potential. And if you think about, you know, what's Rivian worth today, just to get a little sidetracked, you know, they're, they've raised about $1.5 billion this year. Uh, my guess is they're probably raising around a five to $7 billion valuation right now. Um, so I think if you just think about that, well, the Rivian brand alone, could be doing 12 billion in revenue, 11 billion revenue in a couple of years, you know, that could justify, a, you know, a 10 billion, 20 billion valuation just alone. There's upside right there. So I actually think the investment case for Rivian at five to seven billion makes a lot of sense, at least on paper with these numbers. Anyway, Let's move down to Amazon. So Amazon here in the yellow, um, I have that starting in 2021. Now there is some discrepancy here because Jeff Bezos um, in this press release apparently said they're going to start deliveries in 2021 of these electric delivery vans and they're going to scale it uh, till 2024 and have 100,000 on the road. But the problem with that is then in the official press release for Amazon, they do say they want to have the first vans on the road in 2021, but they're not going to deploy that 100,000 till 2030. So who knows what it actually is? I assume the rapid build out, and this is sort of a bull case model, like I wanted to be as bullish and optimistic as possible, sort of giving Riv Rivian the benefit of the doubt just to see how good it could be. So I assume that they deliver all 100,000 of those in through 2024 and then actually expand that business. So Here's the delivery vans, 5,000 of those in 2021 hitting deliveries. We're talking about an ASP of $45,000, which is a little higher than my last video. So we have that scaling to 15,000, 30,000 units a year, then 50,000 units a year. So that hits that 100,000 uh, total deployed by 2024. And then I actually have that ramping another 75,000 units of delivery to the vans. I think Amazon's not gonna stop at 100,000 of these. If it's going, it's working, and they really wanna push out and move into this infrastructure. I think they could be buying way more than 100,000 vans in the long term. Now let's go into the semi truck, because I think this is something that hasn't been talked about at all that nobody's this is just me totally randomly making this up but i think that you know amazon has a huge demand for its prime uh, shipping service they need trucks they're moving vertical into shipping with amazon they're leasing planes uh they're leasing trucks i think they're going to need to eventually want to launch their own electric semi truck and that's why we've seen tesla bring their semi truck to market launch it everybody's putting out a ton of pre-orders because i think the economic case makes sense for an electric semi truck and amazon is going to need a lot of them so i think amazon is probably already working with rivian to develop an electric semi truck right now and so i assume that that starts deliveries in 2023 who the hell knows if that's right scales to 10,000 units a year by 2025 200,000 asp um, so this is a $2 billion a year business if they sell 10,000 trucks a year. Um, just to put it in context, there's about a couple hundred thousand trucks sold every year in North America. So 10,000 electric trucks uh, for Rivian to Amazon doesn't actually seem out of the question. I think they could ramp that to 20,000 semis a year, maybe even more uh, longer term, depending on how big it gets. Anyway, blended gross margin I have starting small, then ramping up and staying stagnant at 20%, which is probably a high... Uh, I don't know, because Amazon is notorious for like squeezing out every single drop of profit from their suppliers. If you're going to, if Amazon and Jeff Bezos go to the table and they say, we want to buy a hundred thousand delivery vans, you bet you're giving them a really good deal on the gross margin. And so I think 20% could be optimistic, but either way, I wanted to make it lower than Rivian's core uh, direct to consumer brand. Okay, moving to Ford and others. So um, this is way more guesswork because frankly, we don't know much about this at all, but Ford has invested 500 million in the company. We know they're developing products on a Rivian's electric skateboard. I assume the units delivered of that are pretty small and ramped slowly, 10,000, 25, 50,000, 75,000 units. And I don't think this will be just Ford. Ford could just do that volume by itself. They sell millions of cars per year. So uh, they sell almost a million just pickup trucks per year. So if they do an electrified pickup on the Rivian skateboard, this could be way underestimating that. But um, I just wanted to... I didn't want to ignore this piece of the business, but I didn't want to put too much weight on it because we don't know anything about it. So that is what it is. I assume a 50,000 unit sales price. I assume they're not as tough at business as Amazon. So we have a 25% gross margin. And so what that results in, we we look starting at about 500 million in revenue in, in uh, 2022, scaling to about 4 billion in revenue by 2025. So these are my estimates. This is sort of my back of the napkin math of just putting pen to paper, uh, doing my best to figure out, okay, how many cars are they going to sell each year? What's the price? That gets me to revenue, then I have gross margin. So now we go back to the summary 
inventory tab, we can start playing this in. Here I, you know, I put in all the revenue from the model on the other tab. You can see it add up here. I like to just see this because you can see 2025. I'm still assuming Rivian's core business about twice as big as Amazon's contribution. And then we have Ford and others still smaller, but you know, a decent size. Um, and this has them, I think this is really interesting. The units delivered, Tesla delivered about 250,000 cars last year is on track for 360 to 400,000 cars this year. So I have Tesla or so I have Rivian getting to be as big as Tesla is today in about 2025. So that would be about twice as fast as Tesla ramp production. But I think Rivian has the benefit of having a lot more years of R&D to prep production. Um, they already have their factory and they have the capital of Amazon and these other big name partners who are just throwing as much money as possible and as much expertise as possible at this to get this done. But to, to be fair, I think this is a pretty aggressive ramp in units delivered and uh, could prove to be far more optimistic. I mean, it's easier said than done to ramp from literally zero in units produced this year to 340,000 in 2025. Here's all the gross margins from the previous chart. Um, this is what they calculate to in gross profit. So in gross profit, the Rivian brand, because of its higher gross margins, actually contributing an even more outsized portion of the profits. Um, Amazon and Ford and others have another about $2 billion in gross profit to get us to about $5 billion in gross profit in 2025. Um, and I forgot to say this, $20.5 in revenue. And the reason why I'm extrapolating this out to 2025, quick side note, is because you know, I found when financial modeling, like especially a company that's rapidly growing, whose business model isn't at maturity, I sort of want to model this out and say, okay, in a best case scenario, if this works at maturity, how big of a company could this be in five years? And then sort of work back to say, okay, if I think this could be a $50 billion company in five years, today I'm buying it at that five to seven billion valuation. Okay, that kind of makes sense. You know, it's risky, but if I'm right, I think I can make a couple multiples on my money. So that's sort of the back of the napkin uh, math that I'm doing with this model. And so as you can see, 20.5 billion in revenue in 2025, which is when I think Rivian starts to hit sort of more that, you know, maturity, uh, almost 5 billion gross profit, and then operating expenses. This is what I total guesswork had to assume, uh, sort of looked into what Tesla did with their operating expenses, assume something similar. Um, and now if you go to 2025, so Tesla is about delivering about 360, 400,000 cars this year. This quarter, I, or this year, 2025, I have Rivian delivering 340,000. So basically it's about exactly about as big as Tesla is now and with less OPEX. So if we go to look at hypercharts, shout out to hypercharts, hypercharts.co slash Tesla, you can see that in 2018, uh, their SGNA was 2.8 billion and their R&D was 1.5 billion, growing pretty significantly there. So, and actually going back to that, you can see the total OPEX here about 4 billion with that line right there. So about, you know, 3.8 billion, then a little over 4 billion in 2018. This year, probably going to be on a little closer to 5 billion. And so, you know, 3 billion in OPEX for 340,000. I'm assuming that Rivian is about, you know, 50% more efficient or 30% more efficient um, from an operating expenditure standpoint than Tesla is. This is for a couple of reasons. I think they're not going to build out as many superchargers or direct uh, consumer store locations. And um, uh, frankly, I think they're just not spending as much on R&D uh, and SGNA in terms of like developing new products like the semi truck, like batteries for, you know, your home, like solar panels. Uh, these are all an R&D for autonomous drivers. Driving, the, the full self-driving chip. These are all R&D projects that Tesla's doing that they brought in-house that Rivian, I think, will outsource. I think their OPEX could be a little bit lighter than Tesla's, but who knows? I frankly think this is a very generous assumption for Rivian's OPEX. I think the one thing where this model is going to be totally wrong is that there's just a lot more fat at Rivian than there, than there needs to be because they're like a startup. They've raised billions of dollars. I think they're going to need to go down some sort of slimming exercise at some point and if they want to hit this model. But anyway, I wanted to put in these numbers to see if they really streamline it and they do it super efficiently. How profitable could this be in 2025? 3 billion in OPEX. Let's run with it. You can change it in your own model if you want to. That gets me to 1.8 billion in EBIT uh, earnings before interest in taxes. And if I times that by 25, you got to put a 25 multiple on it. We're looking at a $47 billion potential market cap in 2025 for Rivian. So, um, and as you can see here, they're burning, you know, and this is not assuming CapEx. So capital expenditures to actually build out the production facilities um, in the factory. I didn't really assume that here. I didn't want to, you know, th that's a whole nother story and ball game, but I didn't assume that here. So these losses of about a billion to get to profitability aren't even including CapEx. So that's why Rivian's been raising over a billion, a billion and a half, and they're probably going to raise another billion before they get to profitability at least because it's just so, so expensive um, and their core business is losing money. Wow. While they're investing billions into the factory like it's just super super expensive so 
this is the back of the napkin math that a lot of these partners and companies are looking at. Uh, um, on one hand, with Rivian, they get access to the technology, um, which is something they direly need. That's why Ford's putting in money. That's why GM wanted to put in money because they need Rivian's electric skateboard technology. That is the secret sauce. It's not, you know, the R1S and R1T are great, but that's not why people are pouring in billions of dollars. They want that skateboard. And we're already seeing what that means with the Amazon contract, where they're using that skateboard for 100,000 delivery vans. Literally one contract of 100,000 vans is going to already, you know, start to dwarf what Rivian's doing with the R1S and R1T. So with this model, I think I sort of assume a future where Rivian still focuses on their main core brand as the essence of their company. But I actually don't think like, I think there's a good chance that that's not the case, frankly, and that Amazon sort of starts to monopolize this tech and says, wait, this is working. This is really, really good. We want to, we want to put all your battery and manufacturing capacity into de electric delivery vans, into electric semi trucks, screw the Rivian brand. We don't even really care about it. It's not really making us enough money. Um, and we're just going to go all in to the sort of back end delivery logistics infrastructure. If they do that, I could see Amazon buying out Rivian for like 15, 10 billion uh, in a year or two after they start to validate this, scrap the main brand and just, you know, basically Rivian becomes Amazon's electric vehicle play. And so, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of torn between this future. Like, is Rivian going to stay independent? Is Amazon going to acquire them? Are they going to be this anti, like the Android to, app, to Tesla's Apple, where Tesla's this closed ecosystem, battery, skateboard technology, they have their own luxury brand, they have their own, you know, software. And then Rivian is going to come in and sell the skateboard to every other supplier like Ford, like Amazon, like GM, um, and sort of be the Android to let them build on top of that. You know, I don't know, there's a lot going on here. I think this is fascinating stuff, but I think the point of this episode and what this model helped me think through is like, okay, Rivian uh, raising at a five to seven billion valuation sounds expensive. That sounds like a huge valuation for a company that hasn't done anything. But when I look at the contracts in place, their manufacturing ramp potential, um, I think this could be, you know, a $50 billion company in the next five to six years. And that justifies why companies are investing so much today. Um, anyway, this is HyperChange. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. Download this model, play with it, edit it yourself. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel, HyperChange, scrappy, independent startup, bringing you guys the news. We're I'm reinvesting every dollar into making the production value better. We have some epic content coming. Huge shout out to our Patreons for making that all possible. Um, I, I can't wait to show you guys what I've been working on. Anyway, this is HyperChange. See you guys next time. Peace.